a good example of a country that has done some of the right things. They have come a very, very long distance in terms of their fiscal situation. Caribbean Development Bank, February 24. Mr. Speaker, it is a fact that cannot be refuted. It is a reality. Diana has become the envy of our CARICOM brothers and sisters. The incontrovertible evidence is visible to all and sundry. For eight consecutive years, Diana has recorded and enjoyed uninterrupted economic growth. Mr. Speaker, this phenomenon could best be described as a democracy dividend. This is not a result of a fluke or happenstance, as I would put it, sir. This was realized as a result of prudent fiscal management, responsible decision making, visionary thinking, innovative action, and bold initiative. This confirms the saying, Mr. Speaker, with a right approach, any challenge can be overcome. I'd like to remind this Honorable House, sir, the future comes one day at a time. This budget, budget of 2014, provides another building block towards ensuring that we secure Diana's future. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate my colleague, the Honorable Dr. Ashley Singh, and our team at the Ministry of Finance for a job well done in crafting budget 2014. It was Eleanor Roosevelt who said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. We know the potential that lies in our people. And we are prepared, Mr. Speaker, to unlock that potential. This budget is designed to unlock the potential of our people. The Honorable Mr. Ashley Singh, when he presented the budget, at 4.4 4, page 17, this is what he had to say, Mr. Speaker, and I quote, Mr. Speaker, when we strive to achieve the lofty ideal which we all dear for a better day, we must pay equal heed to the details that often bedevil the achievement of the higher goal. As a responsible government, we make policy and allocate resources across all sectors to meet the national objectives. But government policy and budgetary allocations alone will not cater to the desired destination of equal importance and effort of the teacher who ensures that he or she is in the classroom on time and delivers the right material to ensure a well-educated child. The efforts of the doctor and the nurse who are attentive to the standards of quality care and will meet or exceed the patient's expectations. The efforts of the public servant who is focused on results and improving the way we deliver services across government. The efforts of the employee who goes the extra mile to be productive at work, recognizing as he should that the pro profitability of his employer will determine the security of his job. The efforts of the citizens who take care not to litter, but instead to maintain his or her surroundings. Quite nicely put, Mr. Speaker, it emphasizes the importance there's a role for government. There's a role for the citizens. And what government is seeking to do is to ensure that there is partnership of all sectors to ensure that the beauty of our dreams are realized, Mr. Speaker. In this budget, we focus on three things, sir. Creation of employment, creating business opportunities, and thirdly, equipping our citizens to take advantage of those opportunities. This pro poor 
pro people, pro poor, pro pro budget, ensures personal prosperity of our citizens and it ensures our collective well being. Let me provide the evidence, Mr. Speaker, to prove that this budget caters to the personal prosperity of our, of, of, of our citizens. Let's look at our at the government's housing program. And we heard from the Honorable Minister of Housing and Water that the tens of thousands of Chinese who are now living in their own homes. Sir, Chinese are no longer demanding or looking for a bottom house to rent. They are looking for a mortgage to build their own home. That shows that attention is being paid to the personal well-being. Mr. Speaker, let us look at what is happening on our streets. And while I'm very concerned about the state of accidents that we've been having, the reality is we have more people driving today, we have more vehicles on our streets than we've ever had in the history of this country. Last year alone, Last year alone, 15,793 vehicles were registered. For personal use, 6,800 sold. Mr. Speaker, when we speak to the personal well-being, personal prosperity, I would like to draw your attention to what a number of my colleagues I've already alluded to what is happening in education. Mr. Speaker, we must not sit quiet in this house when we talk about the fact that we have achieved 100% universal primary education in Guyana. We must not sit quiet. Mr. Speaker, we must not sit quiet in this house. We must blow a trumpet let the world know that we are well on the way to achieving 100% universal secondary education. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, our tech box programs are spread throughout the country. Mr. Speaker, we have technical institutes, not just in Georgetown, but in Barbies, in Estequibo. Mr. Mr. Speaker, and we must be careful that we don't miss very importantly what is happening at the University of Guyana. While some will only want to talk about the problems, they are expanding programs that are taking place at the University of Guyana, including very soon online courses being offered from the University of Guyana. Mr. Speaker, I heard the honorable member, Ms. Hastings, just remark about the school feeding program. Mr. Speaker, let me remind this honorable member. When this program was started, it was funded by the World Bank. And when the funding dried up, this government, this government was bold enough, this government was strong enough to face it and to provide the monies that were needed to ensure that that program continues. And we are doing it today not with donor money, we are doing it with our own resources. And this budget continues to provide for that in 2014. Mr. Speaker, apart from the school feeding program, we are providing the textbooks, we are building the ICT labs across the country, and in addition to all that we've already done, it, it, in addition to all that we've already done in education, budget 2014 provides for a new initiative in the education sector to ensure the personal prosperity of our people. Because, Mr. Speaker, I learned something very early. I grew up like any other person in this country, poor and humble. But my mother told me, don't pay attention to what is in the refrigerator, pay attention to the bookshelf. Because education is your way to the future. And this government continues to provide education 
to the people of Guyana. And what we are doing this year, we are providing a grant of ten thousand dollars to every child who is attending nursery, primary, or secondary school. One hundred and eighty-eight thousand plus children will benefit a total allotment of two billion dollars, and that is what Budget 2014 has to offer. And I heard, sir, that people are talking about impact. Maybe we have to have a new definition of impact because it would it would appear it would appear that when people get benefits from the government, it is not impact. It is only an impact when they are starved of benefits because of budget cuts. It does how it appears. Mr. Speaker, in the area of health, we are ensuring the prosperity of our citizens. We are health huts, health centers, polyclinics, regional hospitals, staff with medicines, nurses, health workers, community health workers. And Mr. Speaker, we are lifting the bar. That is why we are now building a specialty hospital to bring specialized care and services to the people of Guyana, where people who have to travel to foreign countries, they'll be able to do it here. That is why it me, sir, and I don't really understand the rationale here of why people have a difficulty with this. Because some of the same honorable members of this house who are having a difficulty with such a project, they can afford the luxury of traveling overseas to go and get their medical attention. They can afford to do it, but this government is ensuring that an ordinary man, whether he's from Travel Creek or Charity, or whether he's from Jawala or, or some other part of Georgetown, could access these services right here in the And there for no other reason, sir, Budget 2014 must be supported because of these initiatives. Mr. Speaker, we are continuing and we are paying attention to what's happening in our environment. I think every guy needs, I think every guy needs, Mr. Speaker, despite of the high rise feelings that we are seeing, the development that is taking place across the coast and in the interior. We are concerned about one thing, the way our people lit up and disposed garbage, the way our communities look. Budget 2014 was bold enough to address this issue by allocating $1 billion for a clean up my country campaign. And Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity tonight to make a call to all the NCOs, the faith based organizations the community service organization, the NGOs, including the political parties, including the political parties, to come together and ensure that Georgetown is cleaned up, every municipality is cleaned up, every village is cleaned up, and we must do it in such a manner that we will never, ever return to the place where we are today. Where we are is because of our own making. Collectively, we must take responsibility for that. And collectively, we must work to improve it and we must sustain it that Diana will be deemed that beautiful country we all want it to be. Mr. Speaker, as it relates to our Amerindians, I heard the Honorable Ms. Hastings referring to what the government is doing for Amerindians. What is the government doing for our Indians? Mr. Speaker, we cannot be myopic. We cannot always be narrow in our thinking. There is a familiar story in sacred text about a woman by the name of Hagar. When she got a child from Hagar, for Abraham's son. And she was and she was she was mocking. She was mocking Sarah. And she was put out of the house and she went into the desert. There came a time when she and the child needed sustenance. 
when she started to complain about her lot and her situation, that she had no water and the rest of it. And she had a divine visitation. And that visitation told her to go back home and submit. But in that very same instance, she opened her eyes and the water was right there. Mr. Speaker, the water didn't appear. The, the, the water did not come. Because of the Lord the water. There is a lot of church sitting in the house right now. Every time the bishop gets up to speak, the opposition seems to be unable to restrain themselves. I don't think this is a recognition of how, how important this man is. They're recognizing the power of this man. But it doesn't stop the rest of us trying to listen to him speaking. So I will seek your intervention. Especially when the, the former for Commissioner Peace has to join in singing too. I want to make a point to this house, sir, that bitterness blinds. Bitterness blinds. Bitterness blinds. I repeat it three times to emphasis, sir, because when you are bitter, what you need for your own survival to be right there, but you can't see it because you are bitter. I would urge the honorable members of this house that we be objective. Everything is not hunky dory. Everything is not perfect. But we have enough. That we have enough that we can see that significant development is being made in this country. Mr. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to our senior citizens, it's a known fact that our senior citizens, we all care about them. We want them to be better. The government has been doing everything within its power over the years to ensure their proper allocation and support for senior citizens, including a non-contributory pension, not contributory pension. Mr. Speaker, this year, the total pension bill will be $6.6 billion. $6.6 billion. And apart from that, my colleague not so long ago, the Honorable Gangle Pusat spoke about this. And that is not a standalone, that includes the water subsidy, that includes the electricity subsidy, that includes free health care. Mr. Speaker, our budget 2014 also caters for the type of social needs of the elderly. In this year's budget, there's a provision for sex. But if there's a provision for the, the opening of centers for senior citizens where their mental and physical health can be catered for. We are continuing to work with our senior citizens. Mr. Speaker, one of the things that I think we have a lot of people across this country smiling, and they are waiting for the implementation. And I would hope that every member of the opposition supports this initiative in the rural enterprise development fund. One billion dollars has been allocated to that, sir. This will lend to business development and ultimately to community development. Mr. Speaker, when we talk about ensuring the collective well-being of all people, we ensure that our infrastructure is being repaired. We ensure, I am extremely proud, proud to have him as my boss. Extremely proud to have him as my boss. I am extremely proud to have the Honorable Dr. Ashley Singh as my boss. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Speaker, when we make an allocation to the budget to ensure our city fences and our roads are taken care of, 
Then we made allocations in our budget to ensure that $1 billion is provided for the building of Interland Roads. It's because we want to ensure the collective well-being of our people. Mr. Speaker, we are providing through this budget support for the traditional sector. And much has been said already about sugar. But, Mr. Speaker, I thought about this long and hard. There was a time when sugar contributed towards the upkeep and support of other sectors in this country. And I was thinking about I will share with this honorable house a situation that I came across. A family that had no father. But one of the brothers was able to make his way in life and he bought a bus. And he was working that bus. From that bus, he took care of his brothers and sisters to go to school. And one in particular made all the way to the University of Ghana. Mr. Speaker, there came a time when the bus had a problem. And the engine of the bus collapsed. The brother who owned the bus who took care of the mother and other siblings went to his mother and said, I would like for the family to help me to get the money to buy a new bus by us using the transport to put it at the bank to get a mortgage. It was the same brother who benefited all the way to university. Because of the income that came from that bus that was directed to the use of the transport. That same brother, there was a time, sir, when sugar was that brother with the bus. And now that sugar is having a problem, look who is objecting. The same people who sugar has to put on their feet. We have to be careful about this, sir. We have to be careful about it. We are continuing to support the traditional sector. Sugar, right. We are continuing, sir, to diversify the economy. It is, it is, it is a known fact, Mr. Speaker, that one of the industries improperly, improperly get on the road that the great jobs that we're talking about in this country is the tourism sector. Tourism. It is a known fact that one of the largest providers of jobs in any economy, when you look at it, is the tourism sector. Diana is bold enough in this budget, Budget 2014, to continue to lend support to the tourism sector by making a provision of 800 million Ghana dollars for a hospitality institute. And that is one of the reasons why we must support Budget 2014. Mr. Speaker, permit me a few minutes to talk about the transformational project that we are having in, the country, in this country. While we are looking after the personal well being of our citizens, we are securing our collection by this group. Big projects, whether it be the Mayo Falls Hydro Project, whether it be CGIA, whether it be the Specialty Hospital, whether it's the Marriott Hotel, whether it's the London to Gotham Road, whether it's the new bridge across the Demerara River, whether it's the Linking Piano with Stoke and a new bridge across the Quarantine River, River, whether it's the one laptop for family program and the government e governance program. Mr. Speaker, I heard the criticism tonight, and rightfully so, constructive criticism is good. It came from the Honorable Member, Ms. Patty Hughes. 
But the fact is, Mrs. Speaker, 30,004 families in Guyana already have a laptop that they would not afford if it was not for this program. 30,004. Mr. Speaker, of the 30,004, 514 had some problems during the warranty period. But was returned and under the warranty, a warranty period had to be fixed. Look at the difference. Are we going to complain about 514 that have problems? Or are we going to celebrate the 30,004 that is already distributed? Mr. Speaker, and why? And why? We celebrate the 30,004. I want to give hope to the people of Guyana. This year alone, another 17,000 will be distributed. And that is something that we need to celebrate. Mr. Speaker, I hear a lot of talk about the minister comes every year and say a bigger budget. But that's the fact. The budget is a bigger budget. But you know why? You know why I'm touching on this, Mr. Speaker? Because we need to know what causes a bigger budget. What drives us into having a bigger budget? You can't have a bigger budget if you're getting more income coming in. Mr. Speaker, we are doing well in the revenue collection. Inflation has been kept on moderate low, and we heard it from the honourable. Uh, Minister Whitaker tonight, 0.9%. There is more disposable income. Our consumption levels are remarkable. And because of the quality of the initiatives that has been put in place, more money is in the hands of ordinary men and women. And Budget 2014 tears us for more money in the hands of ordinary men. Mr. Speaker, I would like to bring to your attention a press release that was issued from the IMF Executive Board. Press release number 13, 534, December 19, 2013. Listen to what it says, Mr. Speaker. During the last decade, Guyana's strong macroeconomic performance has contributed to the reduction in public debt levels and sustained poverty reduction. The economy has experienced seven years of uninterrupted growth, averaging about 4% annually. Not in minister saying that. This is coming from the IMF. Mr. Speaker, listen to what it says as well in the press release. The key pillars of macroeconomic, macroeconomic resurgence of its, its sustained reform, in particular, the implementation of banks, favorable commodity prices, significant inflows of foreign direct investment, and debt relief under the heavily indebted pool budget initiative and the multilateral debt relief initiative. Real economic activity. Expanded by 4.8 percent in 2012 on the back of a broad-based growth in agriculture, manufacturing, mining, construction, and other services. The 12-month inflation rate remained low at 3.4 percent, notwithstanding high energy and food prices. So even though there was high energy and food prices, inflation rate remained low. That's the performance of our economy. Mr. Speaker, this is what the president is saying. The banking soundness indicators have remained strong. With capital adequacy ratios well above the regulatory minimum requirement, non performing loans between 5 and 6 percent over the last three years, and for provisioning for bad loans at comfortable levels. Mr. Speaker, We are seeing bigger budgets because we are doing better. In 2011, 161 billion for 30. In 2012, 192.781. 
It went to 13, 208, it's 40. It went to 40, 220 billion, and 46 million, 661. So, what we are talking about? We are not talking about robbing people from benefits. We are talking about bringing benefits to people. Mr. Speaker, we, we, we must be very mindful about the achievement, the achievement in 2013. And why are we going to have such a sound budget in 2014? The economy recorded its eighth year of consecutive growth. I'm saying this slowly for the people of Guyana to understand. Because sometimes we come here with read fancy papers and the people don't really get it clear. For eight years, Diana has experienced uninterrupted growth despite of all that is happening around the world. Where has Diana happened in Diana? I think, I think, sir, when, when my colleague is conscious of his job as a minister, is doing national service, he should be congratulated by the people of Guyana for managing the economy in such a way. All the members you require. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to turn to some other things. I want to deal with this whole issue of public procurement. This whole issue of public procurement. There's a lot that is being said about this matter. As a matter of fact, some people speak about the Public Procurement Commission as if it, if it would be a divine institution to correct all the wrongs that exist in there. Mr. Speaker, let me bring to your attention. The last year alone, the National Procurement and Tender Administration Board processed 3,800 plus contracts. 3,800 plus contracts. Of that number, 466 were above the 50 million mark that had to come to cabinet for its no objection. Mr. Speaker, only on five occasions, only on five occasions, the cabinet withheld its objection. It's no objection. Mr. Speaker, only 24 bills complain. And this is mainly at the regional level. You know what I'm here to tell you, sir? That if we had a public procurement commission, we are on record of wanting a public procurement commission. The PVP Civic Administration wants a public procurement commission. And we are on record of saying that. We just simply need to ensure that the cabinet's right to no objection remain. Mr. Speaker, out of that, 3,800 plus contracts, 24 people complain. This would have been the work of the Public Procurement Commission, a high price entity, to deal with 24 complaints, which were all, or if they have not all been resolved, they would have been resolved anyhow administratively. This is the nature. Mr. Speaker, let me remind us that when it comes to public procurement, Bids are open in the presence of bidders or their representatives. And the media, this is no secret thing. Mr. Speaker, but we, but we recognize that, sir, that we need to strengthen public procurement because people need to have value for their money. We need to ensure that there is greater confidence. So we are continuing to do training. We are continuing to work with evaluators. We are continuing to work with the tender boards at the various regional levels to ensure that we have a more aggressive system. 
Mr. Speaker, I want to move from procurement and I want to go to dealing with contractors. There are four things that must be highlighted when we debate this bill because sometimes people are talking about uh, the, the, the impact of contractors and how the work is being done. But there are four non negotiable terms. Contractors must have the technical competence. Contractors must have the financial resources to get the job done. Contractors must have the human resources, including the proper engineering skills, to get the job done. And contractors must have the necessary equipment to get the job done. And Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, we have to continue to work in an environment to ensure that contractors perform. When a contract is, is awarded, whether it's for the repair of a school, the building of a road, the fixing of a health center, the, the fixing of city fences, building of a bridge or a culvert, or the expansion of a road, or the roads in the hinterland, government has one thing in mind, and that is the people of Guyana must benefit from that award. And we want to ensure that contractors are seen as partners for national development. That is why we will continue to work with them. We will continue to encourage them. The ones that incur cost overruns, time overruns, there are clauses in the contract to deal with such issues. And we will be dealing with them like we have done in the past. Mr. Speaker, I want to move on to two other Topical issues that I know this budget will 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 find a lot of heat in this house, and that has to do with MCN and Gina. Yes, sir. I will speak about Gina and MCN. Mr. Speaker, over the years, Gina, over the years, Mr. Speaker, Gina has come in for. A lot of criticism. But I've done the research. I have done the research, Mr. Speaker. In Jamaica, in Fiji, in Malaysia, in the Netherlands, in Canada, in the United States, all of these places have an outfit in the kind of Gina. Gina is the government. Information service. Gina's job is to present the views and programs and projects of the government. And it has always been so. Mr. Speaker, I heard someone saying that Gina is just about press releases. And government features. But Mr. Speaker, all the persons who have threatened to cut Gina are to reject the appropriations to Gina. They must know there are 40 persons employed. If you're talking about jobs, you're not supposed to be putting people out of jobs. So cut Gina and to cut down Gina will result in thousands of Chinese, both locally and overseas, being deprived of their constitutional right to be provided with important information with regards to government programs, policies, and related development. So, to cut Gina, what we suppressing press or it will be considered suppressing the press or curbing press freedom. Gina addresses the need and directions of central government. The, the budget can only be interpreted. The budget, budget structure can only be interpreted as an attempt to silence government information on. And may I remind us that Gina Provisions for comes under the office of the president. It's the president's right 
to communicate to the people of Guyana and to let them know a government program that has been attacked here, sir. Mr. Speaker, the research that Tina does. Mr. Speaker, let me talk about NCN. Because we also have difficulties, Mr. Speaker, with some of the people talking about NCN is a public entity doing, doing partisan political work. I'm advised by I am advised by the General Secretary. I am, I am advised by the General Secretary of the PPP. That number one, the PPP has an official publication, which is called the Thunder. And I'm advised as well by the General Secretary of the PPP that very soon, very soon, they will be launching the radio station. So Tina and NCN operates for the government. The PPP has its own apparatus. But it will appear that some people can't separate party from government because that is the way they operated when they were in government. Okay, members, please. You see, when we had a the of the party, there was no separation between party and government. But the PPPC has a government. Gina is an outfit of the government. The PPP as a party don't need the government to represent them. The PPP has the capacity to defend and represent itself. And they have been doing so. Mr. Speaker, I would like to... I would like to ask all of us, sir, that we should pay attention to the fact that we have equal access and equal opportunity. The Honorable Ms. Dawn here thinks a little while ago said she was, she's asking why the children of the interior is not having access like the other children in the other region. Mr. Speaker, if the Honorable Member reads Budget 24, she will discover that that is exactly what the government is seeking to do. We are righting the wrongs that have been there for decades. We are righting the wrongs. We are bringing to the people of the hinterland what they should have had decades ago. Decades ago. And it is being done in a phased manner. Through the office of the Prime Minister, we ensure that our brothers and our sisters in the hinterland would have electricity in their homes. Through the solar panel. And while I was visiting in Region 7, in region seven in one of the villages, one of the ladies in the meeting said to me, Mr. Speaker, I want you to tell the President I want a bigger solar panel because I come to Georgetown and I see them ladies that they were spinning around at the school. She wanted a microwave. She wanted a solar panel who could use the microwave. You know what? She deserves it. But development is incremental. We started small and we have to continue. Last year, provision was made. Last year, provision was made for the establishing five hundred million dollars were allocated in last year's budget for ICT hubs, and we have an allocation again this year to ensure that ICT come to the people of the hinterland. One hundred communities will have. ICT of the next door. The other Minister Minister of Marine Affairs will deal with that. Mr. Speaker, as I begin to close up my presentation, I want to make an appeal to the honorable members of this house. Despite of the chorus and the singing, I'm accustomed to it. Mr. Speaker, 
I want to make this point. Whenever we have finished acting evil, we have to live with our conscience. This is, a, this, this is more than just grandstanding. This is more than just might is right. This is about having to face the people of Guyana. On the 24th, when Minister Ashley Singh stood up at that podium and read his budget, he gave hope to the people of Guyana. Do not take the hope away from the people. From since March 24th, the people of Guyana have been dreaming. They can't wait to hear the time has come and the vote is a big resounding yes to support Budget 2014. Ask your supporters, they will tell you they want this education grant. Ask your supporters, they will tell you they don't want to have electricity bills cut. Ask your supporters, they will tell you they want to see the investment in rice. Ask your supporters, they want to see the expansion in ICT. Ask your supporters, they want to ensure that your facilities are adequately maintained. Ask your supporters, they want to ensure schools have teachers, hospitals have doctors, and they are paid. Ask the supporters, they will tell you that. I don't need to come here to tell you, you know it. And you owe it to the people of Guyana to do what is right. We owe it to the people of Guyana to do what is right. Mr. Speaker, we are here as legislators. We are here as the representatives of the people. We are here as the people who have to ultimately, in this house, decide on the way Guyana will go. The PPPC has come through this budget, the third one in this 10th parliament, indicated these are the things we want to do to secure the future of Guyana. A responsible opposition is to support the things that are good, criticize it, to make it stronger and better, but not to dash the hope of people to the floor. You know, when we are finished, when we are finished dashing people's hope, we still have to go back to them and build it again. Mr. Speaker, I would like to commend what you put forth into this honorable house, and I would like to ask that we all support it. Let us be magnanimous. Let us rise to the occasion. Let us do what the people of Guyana expect of us, and let us do what is right. Support what you're ready for. Let the 40. I thank you very much, sir.